Our latest GN special report is looking at sales data to determine the popularity of AMD and Intel CPUs amongst our readers with dive down data on average selling price, popularity by series, so R5, R7, i7, i9, and so on, and Intel versus AMD monthly sales volume. We ran a similar report in April of this year, but with Ryzen 3000 behind us, we now have a lot more data to look at. We'll be comparing three full years of affiliate purchase data through retail partners to analyze product popularity among the Gamers Nexus readers and viewers. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and its Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter, and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11, using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. This year's busy launch cadence has meant nearly non-stop reviews for CPUs and GPUs alike, and for the past six months it's been a lot of AMD. NVIDIA's had a few launches that have garnered attention. The 1660 Super, as an example, did fairly well, but today we're looking at CPUs. And for competition in the CPU space, it's Intel and AMD, obviously, and then beyond that, it comes down to individual SKUs, which we're going to be comparing as well. So we'll have series data look at what's happened to i5 as R5 has come out, and how has the i9 CPU impacted the high-end and average selling price of CPUs in general. Intel's biggest troubles have been supply shortages and the 10 nanometer delay, and on the supply side of things, we've covered Intel's supply shortage on 14 nanometer probably nearly once every one to two weeks in our hardware news videos for over a year now. There was a brief period of a couple months reprieve for Intel, but that has dried up. So Intel's back in a shortage. That's impacted the sales, availability of the processors in general, and 10 nanometer delays meant there's nothing new. So ultimately for the 2019, year of 2019, the company was barely present in the enthusiast segment at all, even still. Intel is dominating pre-built computer sales, we'll talk about that today, and ultimately DIY enthusiast is an incredibly small part of the market, but also the only one that we can look at and analyze. AMD, meanwhile, has had back-to-back -back launches in rapid succession, which have managed to dominate media coverage for the better part of the year. Today's coverage will look at affiliate sales data over multiple years for GamersNexus.net readers and GamersNexus YouTube viewers. Just like last time, we need to establish a couple of base guidelines that are important to know for this type of content. So the first one to know is that we don't represent the entire computer market and we have no visibility to markets outside of our own. We can't track sales that happen outside of our audience, and so the mainstream part of the PC market and the notebook side of the market, enterprise server, we don't have data for. There's data out there, but it's not ours, and you can go find it if you want to look into that more. When we provide percentages here, the numbers in this content will only be accounting for our audience. That's Gamers Nexus viewers and readers and we can't really extrapolate this data market-wide. Secondly, month-to-month -month sales market share or month-to-month -month sales volume, both of those things, uh, we're, we're using them interchangeably, they are not the same as total market share, period, deployments. So we're not looking at how many global deployments of Intel or AMD there are, but rather the sales per month of CPUs from each company. And Intel's had so much spread over the years especially when AMD wasn't really doing anything, that even if AMD were at 100% sales volume month to month through our viewers, it would take basically decades for them to ever catch up because you're looking at a subsection of the market of a subsection of the market because once you get down to us, meaning not counting Linus and all the people who don't even know he exists, and there's a lot of those too, uh, once you get all the way down to us, it's, it's a smaller section of the market, but we're still working with thousands of data points for CPU sales and the enthusiast audience. So uh, next... Thing to know, oh, and if you want more on the total market share, you can look at the latest Steam hardware survey, which says 20% of Steam users are using AMD now, which is an uptick, but that's also still a gaming audience. Uh, point three out of four, we have no data for enterprise. Both Intel and AMD are locked in a hard fight there, and that's a very important one, but we can't talk about it today. And finally, one of the most important is that the data in this video will be affected by our own recommendations in the past videos and articles. So because people come to us for reviews and recommendations, it's likely that products and product purchases will skew towards the things, the things that we like and skew away from the things that we don't like, and uh, that will affect the data, of course. And then we're also rounding to the nearest whole number for this, so results will be plus or minus 0.5%. Okay, let's get into it. 
We'll start with our year-over-year -year sales volume plot for AMD and Intel. This includes data from our April edition of this report, but has expanded with new data out to November 30th of 2019. We previously stopped in March, and now we're all the way up through December. To quickly recap, November and December of 2016 saw AMD at its lowest point in GN's 12-year history, where we could measure affiliate data anyway, with Intel selling about 93% of CPUs against AMD's rough 7% in those months. White Diamonds, first encountered with the 7700K in January of 2017, mark major desktop CPU release dates for each company. AMD saw a surge of sales in February as old FX stock was dumped for cheap and Ryzen pre-orders began with AMD notching a major sales month with the Ryzen 1000 series in March when it released. The R5 launch sustained that for a bit, but Intel pre-orders went live for the 7000 series Extreme Edition chips in June, allowing it to recover some ground. The 8700K launched in October of 2017, burning 7700K buyers, but supporting Intel at 70% sales versus AMD's 30 for the same month. At this point, it became a fierce battle with both companies equally engaged, each launching processors that did manage to outdo the competitor's processor for that segment. Things bounced up and down through October of 2018 when Intel launched the 9900K and saw its last month of any meaningful holdover AMD. This was at about 60% sales volume for the month. After this, AMD surged to over 80% in March of 2019, doubling its percentage stake of sales volume from 2017 March in just two years. It also dipped below Intel one final time in May of 2019 before remaining in the lead for the rest of this chart. The chart is now flipped from how it started, with AMD still clawing away large sales numbers from Intel each month. The Ryzen 3000 release in July allowed AMD to move to nearing 90% for the first time in our operating history, and the November launch of the 3950X, Threadripper 3, and more importantly, Black Friday sales of other R5 and R7 chips allowed AMD to take about 93% of sales volume for one month, with Intel down to about 7% for our track CPU sales. This is a complete reversal from December of 2017. At present, it looks like Intel won't have anything for at least another year, and maybe more than that, so this is likely what the chart will look like for the foreseeable future for DIY enthusiasts. That chart paints a good picture for AMD, but there's a lot more to it than that. AMD is still losing hard in the system integrator and OEM space, and while we don't have our own numbers to track sales volume per month there, we do have people we can talk to. Speaking with a handful of system integrators and OEMs off record, we learned that some system integrators are still selling 70 to 80 percent or more in some instances of systems with Intel CPUs installed. Although things look grim for Intel and DIY, it still has a strong hold in pre-builds. AMD even acknowledged this in January of 2019 when it told us that its next big goal was getting closer to system integrators. This was at CES. AMD is also lacking in its retail education, where traditional retailers like Best Buy lack the employee training required to adequately explain the difference between AMD and Intel systems. This is an AMD problem first and foremost, and is something that the company needs to address by building inroads for pre-builds and the sellers of them. Unfortunately, the solution to this problem will likely involve money as well in the form of MDF or a training allowance, but once AMD can justify that, it may be able to change some of the pre-built market. Average selling price is next. This is an important indicator to where each brand falls in the market, but is also an indicator as to how much revenue a company is doing overall. Even if the margin were the same, high ASP is appealing to investors. For 2016, before Ryzen launched, AMD's average selling price through our audience was just $104, which is represented mostly by fire sale FX parts and maybe some APUs. The 2017 numbers evened up, with Intel on the rise as the Intel Core i5 CPUs were no longer considered good enough, allowing i7 CPUs to drive up ASP. AMD's Ryzen launch increased its average selling price by more than 2x versus the previous year, which was mostly APUs. 2018 continued this with the Zen Plus half-step holding AMD's position. Intel, now with the 9900K under its belt for end of year and the 8700K for the beginning of the year, has moved up to $371 average selling price. The entire enthusiast DIY market was shifting toward more expensive processors. First quarter of 2019 saw a dip in ASP for AMD, mostly result of our affiliate sales tracking so many Ryzen 1 and Ryzen 2 sales, like actual discounts. The 2600X and 2700X XSKU parts, for instance, were dropped. Intel continued to grow, boosting up to 410 ASP. And we should note that this isn't just representation of trend shifts in what people buy, but also a shift in what Intel is able to even sell. 
or AMD for that matter, but Intel's more affected here. Intel still made plenty of i5 CPUs, but with no one buying them, Intel was relegated almost entirely to the 9900K and to some extent the 9700K. The rest was stuck on shelves, thus driving up ASP. Finally, the new data points in this video is for quarters two to four of 2019. AMD moved up to $239 ASP thanks to Ryzen 3000, but was still averaged down by high sales volume of older 2000 series parts for cheap. The R5 2600, for instance, has been $115 recently. That's great value and a good buy, and we're happy to see a CPU company at all discounting its products, considering Intel's never done that. But it does bring the averages down. Intel also fell a bit, down to $395, and that's from its own recent price reductions, albeit smaller ones. Time to look at some graphs of the popularity by series. These are the last two. This will help us understand what our GN viewers and readers are actually buying individually. The first one is for Intel. These percentages are against the company's total processor sales for Gamers Nexus viewers and readers each year. The percentages do not factor in the other company here, AMD in this instance, at all. The bars represent years, with the horizontal axis representing each of the processor categories by name. For Intel, the entire low end has been lost in our audience. Pentiums, Celerons, and i3s were never popular with our viewers to begin with, which makes sense given the enthusiast slant of our buyers. But Core i5 CPUs were big in 2016, and that's probably around the last time we said that an i5 is enough for gaming, or close to it. Over the past few years, Core i5 sales have fallen from as high as 48% of Intel's total sales to our viewers to as low as 14%. Again, that's not 14% total processor sales, but 14% of Intel's processor sales for that year or quarter. The trend has moved heavily toward i7 and i9 CPUs, with a big uptick for i7 9700K sales for end of 2019. The i9 9900K is Intel's strongest bastion right now. AMD's chart is next. For this one, FX is finally dead. The R3 series is barely selling, since it's just APUs now, and the R5 series is burgeoning. Given that the R5 3600 is probably the best balanced CPU right now, these numbers make sense. The new R9 series still comprised 4% of AMD's total processor sales for the latter three quarters of 2019, and they were only available in, well, since they launched in July, which is a good percentage when considering the R9 CPUs are relegated to the 3900X and 3950X CPUs. Threadripper hasn't moved any volume for most of 2019, mostly because the 3960X and 70X haven't been available via retail yet, or not in any meaningful quantity. And the R7 series has had a bit of a decline, and we suspect that more of the purchases in the future will split between R5 and R9 going forward, with R7 likely receding closer to the 30% mark over time. So remembering all of the earlier listed points in the beginning of this video then, the takeaway is that Intel's had a pretty rough year. It's time for Intel to get moving. At this point, it's not a challenge of money or talent or engineering capability or manpower. It's a challenge of the technology currently available and Intel's ability to, or lack of ability, to accelerate getting to a newer 10 nanometer, 7 nanometer, whatever their node may be. But Intel's ability to get to the next product is the real challenge. And time is something you can only account for so much, especially when you are your own fab. That's a, a big challenge for Intel. Fab space is a problem as well. So. For Intel to compete in the DIY enthusiast market, if it wants to, hopefully it will, stay in this market in any competitive fashion, it really needs to get past refreshes. The 9900KS was just a 9900K, except with an S at the end of it and a higher stock frequency. So it overclocks a little better. Well, you're talking about overclocking as the main selling point of a product, and at that point, the sales volume is going to be really small. The amount of people who actually overclock, it's pretty low. And we're talking like less than 10% of anyone who ever builds a computer based on some of the sales data we've seen from, uh, from teams that make software that collect a lot of data, but we can't say who they are because they don't want you to know. But it's under 10% overclocking. I'm not going to give an exact, exact number because it may have changed. So 9900KS, not really a wide market to target with that. The 10980XE is functionally a refresh of the 7980XE, which is about two years old now. So that's not exciting either. It's got mitigations that made it a bit slower in some tasks and otherwise unaffected, but I was overclocked a little better. But again, not really a big sales item, especially once you're already in HEDT. And HEDT was a strong point for Intel, as was the 9900K. And those, the 9900K is still are, but uh, Intel is basically holding in the i9 segment, while AMD is the most dominant in the $200 price segment. And 
Threadripper at time of filming this is still basically unavailable. It's technically released, it's technically available, but there's no supply. So we don't have any, any Threadripper 3000 series sales data to look at, but it is reasonable to assume that the HEDT market will start to go away for Intel as well if those Threadripper chips ever become more widely available. And they probably will, but they're likely being binned for Epic, as is the 3950X. Uh, set of chiplets that would be good for those CPUs. They'd also be good for Epic. So AMD's 3900X and 3950X, while good, have had limited supply and have allowed Intel to hold its position in the i9 segment. And AMD still doesn't have a CPU that covers the gaming only or FPS snob type of player like Intel does. So that's another division in the market where AMD is lacking something Intel doesn't have. And at this point, it's one of the only things that Intel does have that's favorable for it. So that's the recap of the data. Our most recent numbers have AMD at in the 90s for percent of sales volume per month through our viewers. And we've done a lot of AMD coverage. We haven't recommended all the parts, but if you look at some of the numbers and the data as it's broken down, certainly, for example, more 3800Xs and 3600Xs sold than you would have thought, considering we said don't buy either one of those because the lower tiered ones made more sense to us. But I guess the only point of saying that is even though our content will skew the purchases, there are still a lot of people who don't listen to us but still buy through our links. So even with that offset, Intel's just not looking good. And uh, that's all there is to it. Although I will say the i5 segment, it seems like people have generally gotten the notice that don't bother buying those at this point. Thanks for watching. That's it for this one. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, like by buying one of these or the mod mats. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to support us there as well. We'll see you all next time.